اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبحانک لا علمنا الا ما علمتنا انک انت العلیم الحکیم ففهمنا سلیمان وکلنا تینا حکم و علم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحلل اقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی لا حول ولا قوت الا باللہ العلی العظیم سبحانک لما وحنا نیک انما لا تنسنی ولا تنسنی الحمد لله افضل الحمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی آلہ و سائر نبی و صالحین و سلم الموفقنی و اہدنی و صددنی و اجملی بین السواب و الثواب و عذنی من الخط و الہرمان آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ and welcome to another episode of questions and answers the last of the week but also the last of 2021 I'm your host, Amjid Muhammad, and I will be with you up until 8 p.m. today, inshallah. And uh, my task will be to take your questions and give you some responses. Again, they don't have to be questions. They could be observations. They could be a certain point you'd like me to discuss. Anything really, something that will benefit yourselves and benefit the other viewers. How do you get your queries, questions, and points to me? The easiest option, I guess, is to pick up your mobile and dial 01274 214 299. That's 01274 214 299. Make your call and inshallah we will be here. Uh, our producer will pick up your call and uh, patch it through here into the studio and we'll be able to hear your question uh, as you speak. Uh, on through the speakers and then I will be able to respond once you terminate your call I will then respond to all the viewers that's the easy way so that's a phone call the second option uh, or and when you do make a phone call you can raise your question in English in Urdu and if you wish even in Pukhto I'm sorry I can't do any other languages but I can cover those three if, on the other hand, you prefer to send an email, then we ha have an email address, and that email address has now been running for close to a month now, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it uh, became about by chance. Um, you know, uh, opportunity is always, always look for opportunity in, uh, in uh, difficulties, in challenges. And uh, the email address is qa at ikra.tv. That's q a n d a at so that's the at sign i q r a dot n uh, sorry dot t v okay so we already have our first call i was going to say get your calls in early alhamdulillah this person has got their call in early so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear caller wa alaikum assalam my dear brother how are you i'm very well thank you yourself keeping well very well indeed i just want to say to you i think you must be the first person with knowledge of Islam that I've actually heard saying it is the last year of 2021, last day, because I have always been baffled that we Muslim keep on saying it is not sunnah to celebrate our new year, yet we live in Europe and our children are bombarded with this new year that is going to be happening tonight. All the media, all the stores, all the shopping centers are full up with Christmas decoration and everything. Why is it that we Muslims tend to be so pious, and yet we don't want to teach our children when it is our New Year? And then on top of that, when it's our Eid, that is the only time our children get to know it is Eid, because number one, mashallah, shukr, alhamdulillah, that majority of the Muslim fast and knowing that end of the fast it is going to be a celebrated day and uh, the children are looking forward to it because individual family they tend to give money at that Eid not presents and then the Eid, Eid of uh, Hajj when Prophet Ibrahim Islam our father of all the religions has blessed us with this beautiful Hajj, with this beautiful period. But to go back to why is it we Muslim it tend to say because Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, didn't celebrate his birth, which is wrong, he did not celebrate New Year, which completely baffles me, and yet we live in Europe, yet we live in the United Kingdom, and we are bombarded, I'm repeating myself, bombarded with what is happening at this moment in time. So I'd like you to express, why is it what we do 
is, in my eyes, hypocrites, because behind the closed doors, I wonder how many British-born Muslims will be celebrating tonight. Thank you. Jazak okay. khair, my dear brother. Uh, interesting question, and it's a very topical question, obviously, because of the time of the year. So, fantastic. Jazak khair for giving myself the opportunity to be able to explore this very question. And I think it's two parts, if I, if I picked up uh, our brother's point. One is, where's the positive affirmation and the education with regards to, as we term, the Islamic calendar and also the Islamic dates? And then why do we have an issue or have problems, say, when we have, for example, the dates or what are considered as significant dates within a European setting. So I'm going to sort of separate them into those two broad categories. So let me first tackle the issue of why are we unfortunately unaware of our Islamic calendar? And that is a fact. We are completely unaware of it. We do, you know, as soon as it becomes Ramadan, where we go down to the masjid and we're waiting on information, on news, when is Ramadan? Obviously, we know roughly when it is because even your Apple and I guess your Android phone will tell you that it will predict that your Ramadan will start on the 3rd of April, for example, for the next year, 2022, that it will start on the 3rd of April, approximately, and Eid will be on the 3rd of May, approximately. So we know already in advance when it's going to be. But obviously, on the actual day, we wait. But now many people don't even go down to the masjid. I guess they flick on their sky box or whatever they have, and they wait for the taraweeh to start in the haramain, uh, on particular in Masjid al-Haram. And when the taraweeh start, everybody says, oh, it's Ramadan. And bearing in mind, obviously, that the declaration in Saudi in particular would be made a few hours before the, we, you know, we had finished our day, so we would probably be still around Asr time, maybe even between Dhuhr and Asr time. And because obviously of the time difference in Saudi Arabia, we will already know that, oh, it's Ramadan tomorrow or vice versa, it's Eid tomorrow. So we know that date. And also when it comes to Eid al-Adha, we have a rough idea, the, the, uh, the one in which we perform Qurbani. Uh, and those fortunate of us that will go and perform Hajj. We also know that it's approximately two months-ish after Ramadan. So uh, we know definitely it's after. Uh, some of us may not know it's about two months, but that's approximately what it is. And we then kind of, you know, we don't know about that one too early because obviously with Ramadan finishing, it's easy to know when Eid is because it's when you can start eating again. With Eid al-Adha, unless we're following the ritual acts that a pilgrim has to perform for Hajj, we don't really have much of an idea what's going on until again uh, we hear news. Uh, and that one is a lot, we'll know that a lot earlier because Eid is on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. So we know when it's the 1st of Dhul Hijjah, we add obviously 10 days and we know when Eid is going to be. Whereas Ramadan is on the 1st, uh, Ramadan is on the 1st of Ramadan and Eid is on the 1st of Shawwal. So we only know that when obviously the, so then, so, so, so now we need to see is, We've got our calendar, what we call, refer to as the Gregorian calendar, which is based on solar, and that is what we call, you know, the European calendar, the, the modern calendar that we have, you know, it, Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We have that calendar, and we know in advance, you know, again, you check your phone or anything for that matter, you know when, which month's going to start when, and when it's going to finish. In fact, if you scroll, if you've got enough time, and you scroll on your calendar on your phone, you probably can reach to 2,312 and know when January is going to start. I've never tried that. Maybe you can't, but you'll get my idea what I'm trying to say. We can't do that with the Islamic calendar because Islamic calendar is still what the original method to determine the start of the month, which was the sighting of the moon. Note the word month is based on the word moon because originally the sighting of the moon was the way you determine the start of a new month. The Judaic calendar continues to follow that procedure uh, and also the Islamic calendar continues to follow that procedure. I appreciate there are people who are saying maybe we should now start using astronomical predictions and things of that nature but I've spoken at length on the topic of why we go for sighting uh, if you search my name and 
search on moon sighting you will find lots of documents lots of videos lots of my research which will demonstrate that to you and obviously now is not the time maybe when we get into next year inshallah i will speak about it now it's unfortunate that we only wait for the start of ramadan or the start of shawal and maybe the start of dhul hijjah we don't eagerly wait for the start of muharram or the start of rabi al awwal rabi al thani uh, Jamaad al-Ula, Jamaad al-Ukhra, uh, Rajab, Sha'ban. You know, we don't look at these months, okay? Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qa'da. We don't, we're, not, we're not concerned about these months because there's no Eid in it. <laughs> so we don't show any concern. But we know that there's a special day of 15th of uh, Sha'ban. We know also that the 10th of Muharram is a special day. And there are other days which are special in there as well. And similarly, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to fast on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every month. These were referred to as the Ayyamul Bid. But because we don't follow that, we, we, we've cast that to one side. So this is really about education. And I always say education starts at home. That's the key place education starts at, is at home. And it's a case of bringing to the child's mind about what exists. Now, when you live as a minority, it's always gonna be difficult. That's something we have to accept. As we continue to live as a minority, in a particularly, you would say, an atheistic, uh, non-denominational country, maybe with a Christian inclination, then we're going to be bombarded, as the brother used, by these kind of points all day long. Because that's the country we live in. That's the world we live in. And that's just the way it is. And if we're not reinforcing our own identity on our children, then somebody is doing it for us. Okay, somebody's doing it for us, school is doing it for us, society is doing it for us, shopping malls are, advertisements, the mobile phone, the TV, you know, that's, there's a message being impounded upon us through all directions. So the first thing is we educate ourselves on the Islamic calendar. Then we say, well, how did the Islamic calendar start? Well, it started uh, retrospectively by Sayyidina Umar, you know, when he said we need to have our own calendar, this was in his uh, time as a Khalif, and he said, well, what momentous occasion shall we use to determine the start of our calendar? And many people said numerous things, the birth of the prophet, uh, or when he received prophethood, um, you know, and also when migration was made to Medina. Migration to Medina was chosen by Sayyidina Umar as the day zero or year zero. Reason being is that Islam, in terms of its events, in terms of how we recognize things, will always be religious based. So we might think the momentous occasion was the birth of the Prophet. You know, that should be day, year zero, but that's not how uh, the companions understood it. Similarly, you could argue the time when revelation came, when the Prophet ﷺ was in the cave of Hira and Jibreel al -Islam came, when he made that declaration. Again, no. But when the people moved, from Mecca to Medina, in reality then, Islam was established on the earth at that point. Because even though Islam existed um, when the Prophet -Islam made proclamation, it existed in the hearts and minds of the pious. It could not be established as an institute in Mecca because the Muslims were a minority. And as a result, they could not impose Islam. So Islam was spiritual with no body. When, it, when the Muslims went to Medina, Islam became an institute. There were mosques built, so we had, it had buildings. There was infrastructure. There was uh, the establishment of Ramadan, the establishment of Zakah, the establishment in principle, uh, in, 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 in practice of Salah, uh, the establishment eventually of Jihad. The establishment of so many things which a modern sovereign state does happened all in Medina. So that became the date. So according to Islamic calendar, we're in 1443 rather than 2021, eventually 2022. So you may find some scholars will say to move us away from putting our focus on 2021, 2022, so that we don't lose our identity. We keep some reflecting over our calendar, which exists. So we remember the months. We remember the special days. 
we know why the calendar was set up. Otherwise, with all this bombardment, with all this going on around us, we lose our identity. We forget who we are. Okay? But in reality, you know, what about, you know, should we celebrate uh, the end of a year? Should we celebrate the beginning of a year? Well, Islam is not really a celebratory, uh, celebratory and, it, and, it's, and I say celebratory with a difficult to pronounce, C-E-L-E-A-B, meaning it doesn't always celebrate things. We do shukr. We're grateful. But we don't necessarily celebrate because celebrate is about, if you look, you know, what happens on New Year's Day? You know, people want to have a party. People want to forget. It's, it's, it's always about forgetting something. Okay, trying to forget your problems. Drink, be merry. You know, we hear the same sort of thing in Christmas. You know, have a good time, have a good laugh. All these are to make us forget about our reality. What is our purpose here? What is our goal here? Now also, we're not dead souls. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits us to celebrate and He gives us Eids for that. And what's the celebration for? Well, Eid al-Fitr, the Ramadan, after Ramadan, that Eid, Eid al-Fitr is to celebrate because Eid al-Fitr, when we look at the word, okay, is for the fact of iftar, Eid al-Fitr, iftar. Iftar means when you break your fast. Because this is an Eid to celebrate that you have done such a momentous task. When you have an employee and he does fantastic, you give him a bonus. Why do you give him a bonus for? You give him a bonus because he said you're doing a great job. Here you go, here's your bonus. And what else does that bonus do? That bonus incentivizes to your employee that work hard and you'll be rewarded for it. Okay, work hard, you'll get rewarded. So you want to carry on working for that employer because you think this employer is fantastic. I roll my sleeves up, I work hard. He gives me a bonus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing the same thing. He says, work hard, we do Ramadan, we work all the way through Ramadan, we fast, we stand in prayer, we give sadaqah, we try to be good to one another, we feed people, we do all sorts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that. So he says, right, have a day in which you don't have to fast. In fact, he makes it haram to fast. I want you to eat, I want you to drink, I want you to wear nice clothes, I want you to gift one another, I want you to enjoy the day. Okay? Not in haram pursuits, only in halal pursuits. Okay? I want you to enjoy the day. Have a good day. Do shukr. So he gives us that. What about Eid al-Adha, which is the one in which we do qurbani, where people perform hajj? Well, as I've already alluded to, this is at the end of hajj. And hajj is one of the most challenging, but also one of the most complicated, you could say, ritual acts of worship, lasting over four or five days. And obviously, if you've been there a week before, maybe lasting over nine, ten days, especially if you've performed an umrah. So at the end of all that act of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, enjoy yourself. Eat, be merry, be happy, halal, and there you go. So you notice that we don't celebrate Eid as such. We don't celebrate Eid al-Adha. We enjoy Eid. It's a day off, okay? It's a day off, literally after a hard shift of worship. 30 days of worship, get a day off. Even then, you've got to pray five times a day. On top of that, you've got to pray the Eid Salah. But you get a day off from what you were doing in Ramadan. Five days, three days of uh, Hajj, very challenging. Tawaf, Sa'i, okay? Going to Mina, going to Muzdalifa, going to Arafat. Pelting the Jamarat, you know, it's quite challenging in the state of Ihram with two pieces of cloth. So Allah SWT says, enjoy. So we enjoy. So when it comes to the end of a year, we cannot deny that 2021 is finishing and 2022 is starting. How can we deny that? You know, that's ridiculous. It's a fact. Okay. So when a year comes to an end, then it's a time for reflection. How did this year go? Am I closer to Allah in now on December the 31st than I was on January the 1st, 2021? How many good deeds did I perform over these 12 months? Was it a good year? Was it a bad year? Have I moved forward in my knowledge of deen? How are my children? Are they more religious? Am I more religious? Am I more pious? Am I less pious? 
And is there anything for me to be grateful for in 2021? Of course. So the, it's a point for reflection. Is it a point to lose your head and celebrate till 12, 1 in the morning and drink and dance and, and, and fireworks? Is it, is it something, should we be using this day to forget? Or should we be using this day to remember? And then, obviously, the New Year starts. So there's nothing, you know, I know there's all these things about New Year's resolutions. You don't need to make resolutions as such, but you need to make Nia. It's not a resolution, it's a Nia. Oh Allah, please make this next year a better year for me. So what I'm going to do is I owe X number of kazas. So I want to clear my kazas. I want to, you know, make sure that I learn a few hadith by heart. I want to learn a few ayats of the Quran. I want to perform hajj. I'm going to go into i'tikaf in Ramadan. I, you know, make these near. Okay? So, you know, it's not about celebration. Muslims don't celebrate anything. It's just not in our DNA to celebrate. We are thankful. 